Hello, thanks for calling. Hi, thank you for <coughs> taking my call. Uh, this is uh, so educational hearing about the blatant disregard for the law that uh, y'all had to go through. And um, Well, Julio is colored amazed that you even called, so, you know. <laughs> Casey mentioned um, that her subpoenas weren't um, followed by the judge, that they were just blatantly um, disobeyed. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what the subpoena is, why it's so important, and what a lawyer can do in that kind of situation <coughs> when the judge refuses to enforce a properly filed and served subpoena. And I'll take the answer off air. Thank you. Recuse the judge. <laughs> so in our case, I'd had such difficulty getting discovery. Um, and there's this legal fiction that, that, that 3914 is the only, that the Michael Morton Act is the only way to get discovery. I filed like 10 subpoenas and didn't get responsive documents. So I started off in this hearing trying to, you know, file a motion to compel responsive documents. And for reasons I will never understand, Judge Strother said, I'm not going, I'm not going to enforce your subpoenas. In fact, I'm not going to read what was produced or even your subpoena. I'm just going to rule for the state. Wow. But we're the, okay, so were the subpoena led right into the recusal of Judge Strother. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So you were the, the subpoenas were going to state agencies. Yes. Okay. Um, so theoretically, under under the new Michael Morton Act, thirty nine fourteen, that stuff should come to you via discovery, right? Should. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's amazing to me that the judge wouldn't even enforce it through that way, through the statute. And, and and who was moving to Quash? Was it was the district attorney's office acting as the agents for those agencies? So interestingly, when we were in front of Judge Strother, it was the district attorney that was moving to quash these subpoenas because, by all accounts, I mean, I often felt ganged up on. Mm -hmm. Like I was fighting two prosecutors, and I and I said that to Judge Strother. Like I don't trust you. He would tell me to be quiet. I can make my record later, and I, I don't believe you. And then Should when I, I tried to make my record, I was like, this is why I don't believe you. You don't tell the truth. Um, when we got in front of Judge Johnson, who, Matt Johnson, I will say, one of the fairest trials I've ever gotten, like just balls and strikes. I, I have no complaints about him. By the time we got in front of Judge Johnson, the DA's office wasn't moving to quash subpoenas. DPS was coming in. Or the city attorney. Or the city wow, attorney. Wow, really? And moving to quash their own subpoenas. I had... So Thomas and I did a little um, did a little recon ourselves. I'd gotten invited to uh, a Sunday coffee with a lawyer for the attorney general's office that is representing some DPS agents. Mm -hmm. And because he'd been so dishonest with me, we recorded the conversation. <laughs> <It's been> wonderful, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. And then in the in the course of this hour and twenty minute recorded conversation, says that you're right. Rain is not giving you everything. Just said it. I don't know that I believe him. I think it's self-serving. I think they're both lying weasels. And when the ship goes down, they start to cannibalize and jump ship. So did they're you have, equally culpable. Did you have people pointing fingers later Absolutely, on? Absolutely. They're doing it now. They're going to poke somebody's eye out. They're doing it right now. <laughs>